Glad to see so many folks in the audience this morning. Um, we're going to continue our, our foray into large-scale distributed computation this morning um, with some interesting talks on graph processing and load balancing um, in large-scale distributed systems. And so our first speaker is, um, is Zuhair Khayat, who is from the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. And he's going to be talking about dynamic load balancing and graph processing algorithms. All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Today, I will be talking about our graph processing system, which is called MISAM. For those who are wondering what does MISAM means, it mean, it's, an, uh, it's an Arabic word for a double band scale that usually use, use for balancing things. So, at the beginning of the talk, I'll be talking about the importance of graphs. Uh, researchers have been using graphs to abstract the application-specific algorithms into generic problems. Usually it's represented as vertex edges interactions. And for examples, we see that you have the max flow and road networks, diameter of the World Wide Web, ranking in social networks, and simulating protein to protein interactions. Although they all have similar uh, computation behavior, or like uh, they have, you compute them similarly, you, uh, you just try to simulate uh, the vertex edges uh, interactions. However, th those are different applications, and each application has its own computational requirements. We have seen lots of work on graph processing, and one of the most fundamental work is Pigo. It was introduced by Google as a uh, to abstract uh, scaling graph processing. Uh, initially, it was introduced to overcome the limitations of processing graphs over MapReduce. It is based on vertex-centric computations, and it's bulk synchronous parallel. Uh, when we, we try to compare the differences between MapReduce and Predo, we found out that in MapReduce, you write a mapper, combiner, and a reducer for all of your data. Uh, in Predo, you write a compute function for, uh, that would run individually in each vertex. It can, has, it can be identical for all vertices, or you can try to do some uh, smart things to, to have a special function for each vertex. You, usually people try to write combiners to reduce the amount of incoming messages for a, uh, for a vertex, and usually you have a global aggregator. So basically the, the main idea of Prego is uh, about message passing, and it's in memory. So if we want to look how Prego works, uh, you have a set of super steps. At each super step, you have a barrier, which basically marks the end of the super step. You have a set of workers, and the balance of, the compu of your computations, because of the, the uh, bug synchronous barrier, depends on the <coughs> slowest worker. So this can lead into lots of issues. So people have been trying to optimize graph processing. Uh, <coughs> So far, we have seen existing work focusing on optimizing static uh, for graph structures, which is basically, we consider it as a static optimization because you do it before doing the computations. Uh, there are two types of optimizations. Uh, some research tries to optimize for the graph partitioning. Basically, if you see here uh, a set of examples, like a giraffe, they just say have a very fast uh, simple graph partitioning. In the previous paper, they say that the user knows how his data, knows exactly what his data look like, so he should be better know how to partition it. Some other work like GraphLab, Building Urban Surfer, they said, let's use a sophisticated partitioning algorithm. And PowerGraph does not use exactly the minimum because they use other uh, graph partitioning, depending on the uh, vertex partitioning. So other work like uh, Golden Orb, Hama, and Trinity, they said let's optimize for the graph data structure. They try the, to virtualize allocation of vertices and they uh, optimize for the uh, memory access. However, since we saw that there are a set of applications that vary in their behavior, we believe that none of those consider the algorithm behavior. And the, those static optimizations are not enough. So in the Prigo paper, the theoretical Prigo paper, they, they have some coarse grain load balancing where it's uh, some type of work stealing, and we believe that it's not enough. So we looked into uh, a, a wide spectrum of algorithms, and then we uh, clustered them into two types. 
the stationary and the non-stationary algorithms. Uh, the main difference is in the incoming, outgoing messages criteria and the vertex state. So let's just uh, look into an example. So here we show two examples of a stationary algorithm and a non-stationary algorithm. So which is basically a page rank and a distributed mineral spanning tree. Uh, as we can see, this is the first super step. You have a fixed a set of active vertices. They all send to their outgoing neighbors. And you have this, uh, this vertex, which is a sink. It, it only receives messages, but it does not send anything. So we can theoretically consider it as an inactive vertex. However, in the distributed mineral spanning tree, the algorithm says you, you always start with a fixed set of vertices, and that vertex sends to one of its neighbors. So after, let's say, k of super steps, we see that the page rank is still fixed. It, the same set of vertices are still active, and it, it still sends to the same uh, neighbors, but in the distributed mineral spanning tree, it changed. Some of the vertices got active, and they sent independently of the direction of the, of the edges. Also, after a couple of supersets, we see that the active vertices got inactive because it, uh, they reached some convergence according to the algorithm, and other vertices got active. And yet again, page rank is still fixed. So this is the main difference between the stationary and the non-stationary algorithm. If we look into how non-stationary algorithms can affect your algorithm, uh, since you, the change in behavior, so we would expect that workers would have uh, varying uh, vertex response time uh, since you have different amount of outgoing messages going out from your worker you, that would need uh, that would uh, imbalance your system so one of the workers could send most of the messages and other workers just idle sitting idle and also if you are receiving most of the messages or uh, a large number of messages in that super step so basically means that you will be computing lots of, you will require more time to receive messages or you will require more time to process those, those messages. Does it matter? Yes, we believe it matters. So uh, we show here, this is we show, uh, the difference between the page rank and the distributed minimal spanning tree. We show the incoming messages for both of the algorithms. As expected, the page rank have a fixed rate of incoming messages at each super step. In the distributed minimal spanning tree, it has some sort of uh, slow start, so it starts with a very minimal incoming message, then it suddenly jumps four orders of magnitude from the original uh, message distribution. And this shows us that, uh, this shows the importance of how graph algorithms should optimize for the runtime, not only for the uh, graph structure. So here, here we come to the pictures. We present Mizan as a, a bulk synchronous parallel graph processing framework. It uses runtime's fine-grained vertex migrations to balance the computations and communication. It basically follows the Pregel computing model, and it's open source written in C++. So if you are uh, familiar with the Pregel paper, you would notice that uh, the API is not that far from Pregel, it's, it is very similar. And this is actually a, a code snippet from our, from our page rank computation. All right, so uh, as we said, Mizan is simply a bug synchronous parallel, so we are not going to go through how we do things. We will uh, show you how we, how we optimize for the runtime. So basically when we started looking into the graph behavior, uh, we wanted to do runtime optimizations. We wanted to have our migration plan to be decentralized for obvious reasons. We don't want to, uh, uh, to do lots of uh, heavy synchronizations between the workers. We wanted to have it simple and also want to have it transparent. We don't want to change the Pregel API. We don't want the user to have the hassle of uh, be aware of the migrations and change his code, and that would be inconvenient. And it does not assume any a priori knowledge of the graph structure or algorithm. So basically, give us your algorithm, give us your uh, graph, and we will optimize for the behavior. So uh, when we look into where Mizan actually works, so basically, it also cons uh, it, it consists of a set of super steps. You have the same set of workers, it sends and receives messages. And we added an extra layer 
which we call uh, migration layer. And Mizan does all of its planning migration in this small space. So uh, at the end of the super step, it looks into some statistics. Uh, it, uh, it do the planning and uh, and it uh, and then do the migration. All right. So let's see how we do plan the migrations. First, we look into the source of the imbalance. We try to look for which workers are imbalanced, are overutilized, and which workers are underutilized. Uh, once we find out that there, uh, there is an imbalance in that super step, and we, we try to identify which uh, workers are those, so uh, the way that we do that, we uh, monitor uh, some statistics for the vertices, we look for the remote outgoing messages, incoming messages, and the response time. And at the barrier, we, uh, we send high, summary, uh, high summaries uh, high-level summaries of the statistics to all of the workers. So, and that way, each worker can identify whether his neighbors are overutilized or underutilized. After looking into the statistics and knowing that we have an imbalance, Mizan tries to find the strongest cause of the imbalance. Uh, and that by comparing the outgoing messages statistics, incoming messages statistics with the worker execution time, and we have one of those three plans. We either optimize for the outgoing messages, or we either optimize for the incoming messages. If none of those fits the, uh, or if none of those has strong ties to the cause of the imbalance, we optimize for the response time. After we decide which plan to go with, uh, we pair machine, we pair workers, which is a binary pairing. So every worker looks for a single underutilized worker and pair with it. So, in this way, it's done in a distributed manner, and at most, a worker can pair with only a, a single worker. So, uh, here, we can see that worker 9 was excluded from the, uh, from the pairing because Mizan's planning is smart enough to know that, yes, worker 9 is an underutilized, but it might not have the enough memory to accommodate more vertices. After pairing, we look into which vertices to migrate, which depends mainly on the migration objective we found in step two. After that, we simply do the migration. But it's not that simple. So whenever we are doing migrations, you are faced with two important questions. The first one, how to do fast migrations? How to know where the new locations, how to broadcast that new locations? And also, what if, if you have a vertex with huge data and, you, and moving that will cause you lots of, uh, lots of computation overhead? So, to, uh, the way that we dealt with the first issue, we use a distributed hash table to implement a distributed lookup service. Basically, your vertex can run in any machine, depending on your initial partitioning. And for each vertex, it has a home worker, which is uh, confound by this hash function. And whenever a worker, let's say worker one, want to send messages to the remote vertices, it always asks the homework of vertex eight and vertex five. And now we know that vertex eight and five uh, has the homework of two. So we ask worker two where those vertices are located, and then we send the message to the correct worker. So the way we deal with large vertices, we introduced uh, uh, another migration which we call delayed migration for very large vertices. So uh, basically we do this migration in two steps and we'll show you how. So here we decided that vertex 7 is overutilized, but it's also it's very large. So after we, we go to the bulk synchronous parallel barrier, we plan the migration and in this delayed migration we only move the ownership from the old worker to the new worker. Only the ownership. And that makes you have a copy of vertex 7 at the old worker, and you have another copy at the new worker. So the copy at the new worker only receives the messages at the next super step. And we process uh, the vertex 7 at the old worker. So after the second super step, or let's say t plus 1, you will have uh, the new state of vertex 7 exists here. And uh, this vertex has the messages that you want to compute in the next super step. After finishing this super step, we simply move the state from, from the old worker to the new worker, and now we have the state and the messages, and you're ready to process the vertex, and you did a very fast migration. 
this simply uh, concludes uh, how Mizan works, and let's look for a couple of experiments. Uh, we have implemented three variations of Mizan, well, which we call static Mizan. We try to emulate uh, giraffe, where we disable uh, dynamic migrations. We implemented also uh, work stealing, which uh, emulates Kriegel coarse grain dynamic load balancing. And we have the uh, Mizan. So we tested on two types of cluster, a cluster of 21 machines, which is very small machines. And uh, we also tested on a supercomputer that we have on, uh, on site, which is a, a blue gene on 1,024 computer nodes. So uh, this is the graph that we used on or the data sets. You can download the data sets from Stanford Network Analysis Project or the Laboratory of Web Algorithms. We also uh, generated some of the uh, some of the graphs. So those two graphs are generated for experiment purposes, and we used Kronker generator. In the first experiment, we want to see that if if giraffe can be used as a base case for our experiment. The reason why we picked Giraffe because it's the most popular uh, Kriegel clone, and lots of people are using it. So uh, we compared Giraffe with our static Mizan. As, and we found out that even with the static Mizan, we don't have any, any optimizations. Is, uh, the static Mizan is more optimized or faster than Giraffe. So for this reason, we decided, OK, let's use the static Mizan as our base case instead of, instead of Giraffe, because it won't be fair for Giraffe. So the next set, the, this experiment, we tested PageRank, uh, with, we tested a stationary algorithm on three types of partitioning. Uh, in this experiment, we want to see the overhead of Mizan. It's not interesting to run. Uh, dynamic migrations on a stationary algorithm, but we wanted to see that Mizan does not impose extra overhead when compared with the static Mizan or the Pregel clone. And uh, the next step, we wanted to see how Mizan behaves with dynamic uh, algorithms. So we used those two uh, non stationary algorithms, which is the advertisement propagation and the distributed minimal spanning tree. As expected, Mizan was su su succeeded into optimizing the computation of those two algorithms, which are they are non-stationary, and this actually made us happy because we know that the runtime optimizations actually work, and those two algorithms have unexpected behavior. You you can never know how they would behave unless you run the computations. So we are happy now. Uh, in the next step, we wanna to see how the overhead affects our system as we scale to a thousand uh, workers. And from these figures, we find out we have some linear uh, scalability here. And it's very expected that at the 1024, uh, it's, it scales less than compared to the 512 or 256. But we are happy with these results because we know that the overhead does not impose extra overhead uh, over uh, whenever we have large number of machines. So by this, we, we are happy with our system. Yes, it works with uh, non-stationary algorithms. Now we are more interested in looking how extremely skewed graph would affect our system. And we also interested in looking how we can optimize Pregel's fault tolerance. So I conclude my talk with uh, th uh, those uh, notes. Uh, Mizan is a pre system that uses fine grain vertex migrations to load balance the computations. You can find Mizan as an open source system. Uh, it, it's, it's been uh, programmed at CAOS in collaboration with IBM Research, and it's written in C++ and MPI. Basically, we saw that Mizan scales up to thousands of workers, and we are happy that Mizan improves the overall computations uh, it improved between 40% up to two orders of magnitude, and those figures depend on your algorithm and depend on your graph. And we saw that the overhead did not exceed 10% uh, from the overall execution time. You can download Mizan today, and you can try it on EC2 also for free. All right, so. Questions? Hi. Uh, 
least some of your graphs look fairly small, that you compare against a single machine, just raw C++ implementation, just to find out how much overhead there is from the scalability. Uh, can you say that again? Did you try just writing a single machine, non-distributed version? Because some of your graphs had only millions or hundreds of millions of nodes. You could have fit them in one 16-gig computer just to find out what the overhead is of the whole distributed system. Uh, we, uh, we did, uh, yes, we ran some of the algorithm on single machines, but uh, we didn't look exactly why, uh, what's the overhead. Uh, you won't find a, a huge overhead running on a single machine because basically whenever you're sending or receiving messages, you're, it's going to be rerouted locally in your local machine. Right, but you can do a much simpler implementation if you don't have any of those data structures. And it may be that for these jobs, most of the running time is taken up with all of the data structures to manage the, the distributed system. That's what, that's what we have often found, is that you can write a more efficient algorithm if you just you know, have a flat integer array for the vertex and, and just do it as dense matrix multiplies. Um, so to emphasize this simply, uh, the biggest graph you had was about 700 million edges which could fit in less than 3 gigabytes. Do you have like, any idea how this would scale to something that couldn't fit on a single machine? Uh, like, if, if you could run it on a single machine, all right. then it's kind of not so clear why you'd want to distribute it. So like, the, you haven't really addressed the problem that you're trying to well, uh, the criteria we did our experiment with, uh, we wanted to see uh, how the execution of uh, when you're running a distributed manner, okay, yes, it might, you can run it on a single machine, but running on a single machine is not interesting for us. We wanted to improve for the execution of the graph whenever you are running on a, in a distributed system. Having said that, so if the graph fits in memory in a single machine or not, uh, so we, we wanted to experiment on a, on a smaller graph size. So whenever you have a very large graphs and uh, a very complex executions, that you'd have the same uh, optimizations for the larger graph. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. This is a question about your uh, log balancing algorithm, partition algorithm. As far as I know, uh, you optimize sort of one step behind. So you look at the message uh, sent in a receiving pattern and then do um, um, migration, but this migration is applied only for uh, some super sub later. So um, this means, uh, this, this makes your result about minimum spanning tree a little bit surprising. Um, so I wonder um, what, you, uh, what your opinion is about more active load balancing algorithms that will optimize uh, the, uh, move the lo migration, migrate the vertices as, uh, for the current super step. So, all right, yeah. So, uh, if you want to implement something that runs uh, within the execution of the super step, you would face two problems. The first one, uh, you would have to implement extra routines to ensure the consistency of your algorithm. And the second thing that uh, doing that might interfere with the computations and uh, it's very difficult to, to see uh, the, uh, the computation time for your migration if it's going to affect your computation negatively or not. So uh, the, the reason why we decided to put it between the barriers is to uh, try to control how uh, the computation cost of the migrations, we try to minimize it, and also we don't want to interfere with either the user score or interfere with the computation. Uh, if you want to add some blocks or add some consistency measures or algorithms that try to migrate during the super step and at the same time try to keep the consistency, that would add extra overhead for your computations. Well, also one comment about Prophet, actually. So my name is Greg Malevich. Uh, I used to be at Google and I co-authored the Pregel paper. Okay. Now we are at Facebook, and um, uh, we have made a lot of improvements to Giraffe over the past several months. Uh, so, um, this uh, I would like to know uh, what what version of Giraffe you compared against. Well, I think maybe it's uh, seven month old or eight month old Giraffe. So I, I would encourage you to. Uh, check out the latest version of GF and make a comparison. Definitely.
additional questions? All right, then let's thank our speaker. So now we're going to switch gears a bit um, and talk a little bit more about workload elasticity in